Guten Morgen, guten Tag, good day, hola. We're here in uh, west of Calgary, delivering to this very, very fancy new neighborhood coming up. It's all still pretty brand new. Uh, more of it is built out that way already, but uh, these houses here are show homes, and apparently it's hard to see because my fisheye lens. I know, but that one right there on the end, see how close together they are? It's not a fire hazard. Like you could literally just walk across the neighborhood, across people's roofs. Anyways, that one on the right over there, this is starting at close to $750,000. $750,000. Wow! And you don't even really get a yard. Apparently it's only 50 feet deep. I'm not sure how wide it is. It's just as wide as the house. Like, I don't even know if you have property on the side of your house to be able to walk around your house to your backyard. You might have to go through your house. Wow, and apparently they're doing pretty bad right now because obviously no one's buying houses right now, right? During this pandemic. So, hopefully everything goes back to normal soon for these guys, but like seven to $800,000 a month. Uh, a month, I mean, if seven, seven hundred to $800,000 for a house. That's almost triple what I paid in Manitoba. Not quite. That's, oh my God, a big yard in privacy. Wow. Imagine what kind of job you must have to have to be able to afford a house. And then you have to furnish it. And then you have to feed yourself. And then if you have kids, you gotta feed your kids too. Like, Something's got to be done about our housing market. It's getting a little out of control. We need to be able to afford things. We need to be able to afford life. But anyways, <laughs> this vlog isn't about houses, so we are empty right now. I'm headed up to Nisku, Alberta, where I've got to pick up some uh, uh, supplies that I need to strap in my next load that I'm picking up in Edmonton. There's a, we have a drop yard or a, a yard in Nisku and uh, there's some equipment there that I need some straps. Not the kind of straps you're thinking, no, -uh, we're not on flatbeds anymore. Different little two inch straps uh, to help strap in my load that I'm picking up. And then I'm bringing that load once I've loaded that tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. before the gods are awake. I'm bringing that back to Nisku, hooking onto another empty trailer, bringing that back into Edmonton loading it up and that load is taking me home so that I can get this window replaced. Because if you remember from yesterday, there was an incident. Uh, there was a no passing zone because there's loose gravel on the highway. That's how they fix things sometimes. And uh, a guy passed me anyway, threw up some rocks, blew out my window here. We got it all on dash cam. I believe we'll be chasing after uh, that company for that, uh, but that isn't going to be my headache, uh, thank God, because I've had a lot of headaches over the past <laughs> little while. It's kind of nice just to pass off your headache to someone else. Does that sound bad? Like, here, here's a headache. It's yours. <laughs> I know, that's not very good to say, but it is kind of relieving to not have to worry about stuff like that. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it's, it's gonna get replaced. Uh, the, the window takes three days. I think they had to order it in from Seattle or Toronto. Uh, and it's going to arrive at the shop around the time I get there on Friday. It's going to go straight into the shop Friday afternoon as soon as I get there. And hopefully they'll have it done by Saturday afternoon and I'll be back trucking. What? What? Oh, it's getting mad at me. I'm sitting here too long. This truck doesn't like to sit here and idle. It uh, shuts itself off. If 
you, it doesn't want to idle, which makes sense because, you know, I'm not paying the fuel. So the person who is paying the fuel, uh, they don't want me sitting around idling the truck all day long. So we should get moving. We should get moving. And off we go. Another successful delivery by Trucker Josh. Another happy customer. So I've got to make it around this little roundabout here. And I think that that truck on the left there that's watering the grass is going to be in my way. I guess we'll find out. I got to do a whole U-turn right here. I might be able to make it. You see how he's parked over there? I might need to stop and sit there awkwardly waiting for him to realize so that he moves up a little bit. Let's see what happens. Every new neighborhood that's coming up in Canada has these crazy European roundabouts. I still don't approve, but I guess they are kind of fancy. I mean, whatever. It is what it is. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I think I can get past him. Oh yeah, lots of room. Lots of room. You keep watering the bushes over there, bud. I'm just going to sneak past you. Oh yeah, no problem. Not even close. So this on the left here is going to be a big fancy golf course. And uh, this whole area here, they're building like a new town from scratch. It's outside the city, but they're building a new town from scratch. But they're building the houses closer together than they are in the actual city. So this is obviously going to turn into a suburb of Calgary very quickly. The receiver here was a great guy. He was a fun guy, sat and talked to him for a while. I don't got to reload till tomorrow morning, so I have a little bit of time. Great guy, hope I meet up with him again. truck out of here. There we go. Okay, this little pond off to the right here. So some people are going to have a uh, riverfront property or lakefront property here. They've got their own water treatment plant off to the left here. The guy who was uh, the receiver here was telling me all about this neighborhood. And it's its own self-sustaining town built right from scratch. Everything starting off from around, they said the lowest price he's heard of so far for houses here, starting at about $650,000. Woo! So uh, you better be a millionaire <laughs> to live here. But can you imagine living in a community like this? If you could afford it, that'd be awesome. Because you know everybody around you is all hard workers, right? They're all going to work, they're all doing their best, they're managing their finances, hopefully, right? So it should be a pretty safe community because everybody is pretty busy and preoccupied with work. Everything's gonna be brand new. Here's the water treatment plant off to the left here. This town is gonna be called Harmony. I've never actually seen them build a town from scratch this big. Usually it's just, you know, they build a suburb onto uh, an existing town or city. Well, this is right from scratch, right new. But it won't take long and this will be part of Calgary. Things are growing so fast out here. Lots of money flowing around. At the roundabout, take the second exit onto Cope Throne Trail. Thank you for visiting. They got a nice little sign for us. Thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Nice little town you got here. Very nice. Very nice. Trucker Josh stamp of approval. Look at these houses. Three-story houses. Wow. They look like beach houses almost, like beachfront houses. That's what I'm talking about. Proceed to the highlighted route. Oh, I'm going, Karen. I already got Google telling me where to go because you didn't know where we were. This town is so new. Karen doesn't even know where we are. She thinks we're like roaming around the middle of a field right now. Exit the roundabout on the Cobalt Road Trail. Look at those houses over there, though. Just gorgeous. Bo gorgeous. They, they get the gorgeous title. The take the wow. Trail. A three story house. That's what me and Britt have been talking We'd love to have that. We just can't afford that but that'd be awesome to have with like two big levels and then like a big master suite right on the top like a penthouse super nice do any of you uh, live here 
Want to be friends? I knew this place was here. So I'm just on, what is this, Highway 22 in Alberta. Headed northbound, and we're at the corner with, uh, what is it, Big Hill Springs Road. Head into this lovely little corner store here, grab us a lovely little coffee. Hope they got the good stuff. Pretty sure they do, because I, I, I already Continue knew. Continue on this road for 10 kilometers. I already knew subconsciously to stop here. I was coming up to this intersection, and I turned my turn signal on without even thinking. All of a sudden, I'm like, wait, where am I going? And then I came up or over the hill, or like around the corner. Oh yeah, that's right, coffee. My subconscious knows where the coffee is better than, than I do. So here we are, uh, Spring Hill RV Park. Oh, that's this in front of us here. Uh, what is this place called? It just said corner store on here. Whatever, nice big parking lot. It's never too busy. It's kind of off the main route. The, the regular highway is just, well now it's behind us to our east that heads up to Edmonton. So not a lot of people take this road, but we do. Wine and spirits. I always wonder why do they call it spirits? Some kind of voodoo stuff going on here. Spirits. Come here to get the spirits. That's how you know you're in Alberta. Big pickup trucks with big flags in the box. <laughs> We're gonna go to this uh, Flying J here in Leduc, 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 Alberta, just south of Edmonton. I'm gonna quickly swing in here and have a shower. I hope they have showers. This is a really small location, just off to our left. I hope they got showers. If not, then whatever. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna find parking at the Flying J in uh, Edmonton by the time I get there. I've gotta swing past our yard here, pick up those materials first. Or those straps, anyway. I don't know if you'd call that material, but all right. Let's see if we can find us a, a way into here. How many of you know this know this area here? You guys stop at this truck stop a lot. doesn't have a lot of acceleration. It tries to shift gears too too much, too quickly. Oh man, I don't even know if there's parking here for us. Yikes. Oh! Oh! That was a pothole. Oh, see, there is parking back there, but uh, that one oversized load is taking up the entire lot. Look at this guy over here. Blocking everything. Two trucks there, blocking absolutely everything. Well, I'd like to park in there. It's kind of ridiculous. there's at least like four or five spots behind them that they're blocking in. Why are you parked there, bud? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, they're blocking everything. I know it might be a little harder to back up a unit like that, but why would you go in and block absolutely everyone else's chance of parking just so you can go in? And there's this guy here too. Is he gonna leave too? He's taking pictures. I'm gonna honk at you soon, bud, if you don't start moving. Come on. What are you doing? Ugh. Okay, here we go. This is what I mean by truck stops in Canada. I mean like, people just Pull in and just park wherever. Pull the brakes and just park. 
at all these spots behind them that they were blocking. Oh man, that just grinds my gears in the worst way. Grinds my gears. Just to get a coffee. I know coffee's important. I love coffee too, but how many people can you inconvenience? Is it like a challenge? Like how many people can I block in while I go and get a coffee? Ugh. Tell you what, I hope people learn from my vlogs that it's very important to park properly. But you know, they won't. They won't. That's why I didn't even bother going to talk to him. Because if you go and talk to him and be like, hey, uh, you mind? Uh, we'd like to use the parking lot for what it was designed for, parking. He'd probably get mad, you know? I know I complain, I complain. Stop complaining, Trucker Trash! I know. But I do that for a reason. I show these things and I, I talk about these things in a way to sort of shame these drivers who do these ridiculous things that inconvenience everybody else. So that maybe, maybe they didn't realize it. Some people just don't realize when they're being a nuisance or when they're being rude or when they're, you know, doing something that they could be doing better. And some people just don't realize it. Some people just don't have that self-awareness. And that's fine. I'm not trying to say you should have more self. Yeah, I'm saying you should have more self-awareness. <laughs> Edmonton, Edmonton, Edmonton. You and your nice overpasses. Very nice, very nice. I wish we had those. Have I ever mentioned that before? You guys don't know how I feel about Winnipeg overpasses, do you? It is so windy out here today. It's ridiculous. I'm trying to get to uh, Westland, no, West Edmonton Truckland. It's a Flying J. There's that and there's the SO across the street. I'm hoping there's gonna be a parking spot there for us. I guess uh, I should have been expecting traffic. <laughs> it's been a while since we've been in some good traffic. This is nothing yet, but it is what, 5.18 p.m. here? Everybody's on their way home. Everyone's going home at the same time. You thirsty fella? I think as he's gotten older, he's just learned and preferred, learned that he prefers not to eat or drink while the truck is moving. So he waits till I stop and then he eats and he drinks. Smart. He used to just drink anytime, whatever, but he usually, usually doesn't eat as well on the road, probably because he's not as active. We try to get him running every day, but uh, at home he, Britt has this magic. She has this, she's the dog whisperer. She has this magic touch with dogs and he'll do anything for her. He won't do anything for me. I gotta like coax him into it sometimes. <laughs> hey Lisa, it's true, it's true. So, uh, yeah, we're here at this SO here in Northwest Calgary. Lots of, uh, no, Northwest uh, Edmonton. Lots of parking space here. And uh, this is where we're gonna call it a night. 7 a.m. I have to be just around the corner uh, loading up my load. I apparently have to be in there helping them a bit. Because we'll see what happens. <sighs> okay. Oh, I'm tired. I'm going to bed early today, though. So, uh, the plan for tomorrow is I go around the corner, I load up that trailer. I bring it to Nisku. I already told you this, right? I'll tell you again. Bring it to Nisku. Drop it. Pick up an empty trailer. Come back into Edmonton. Load that one up at a different place. And then go home. So that'll be my day tomorrow. It'll be a long day. It'll be a long 16 hour day. But it's going to be fun. And I hope you join us. I'll see you then.